It's time for Washington Shellfish Quest! This month's species, Manila Clam. Hey, how are you doing? Welcome to this month's episode of Washington Fish Quest. I'm down here at uh, Oakland Bay near uh, the Bayshore Golf Course uh, near Shelton, Washington. I tell you, there's basically two things from nature I can make myself really sick off of, you know, outside of poison and stuff. When I was in eastern Washington, it was cherries. Uh, cherry season uh, always did a number on me because I just couldn't stop eating them. And uh, on the west side, it's uh, manila clams, uh, steamer clams as you may know them. Uh, so that's what we're here to get today, the limit's 40. It's a great day out. There's this beautiful little trail that goes uh, alongside the golf course. I have two co-workers that have really recommended this spot to me. One recommended I go nowhere near it because this is Honey Hole. The other recommended I should check it out. So hopefully the recommendations cancel each other out, even though the one that recommended I don't go supervises the other one. Before I came out, I of course checked the Department of Health's uh, Office of Shellfish and Water Protection clickable maps uh, to make sure that this beach was indeed fine to uh, harvest from. Always check before you dig. Know before you go. There are such things as clam rakes, which are uh, basically rakes that have a catcher on the back of them to uh, keep the clams in and filter out the soft silt out. But I tend to just use a regular rake when you're in a, a manila clam rich area such as this. As you can see, it's pretty simple there. You're just uh, raking through the muck, uh, trying not to get stuck in it yourself. And uh, yeah, the clams, uh, they'll be covered in mud, but they have a pretty distinctive, you know, kind of clam oval-y shape. Handful of manila clams. The manila clam actually is not native to uh, Washington or even the U.S. It is an import from Japan that was originally introduced accidentally uh, with oyster seed. However, um, us recreational and commercial diggers really like them. Uh, we do have a native little neck clam, and together they make up the kind of steamer clam group, uh, as we call them here. The manila clam is a lot hardier than um, our native little neck. It can stay out of water for a longer period of time, which makes it easier to ship and sell and all that. It's meatier too. Um, it grows a little easier and it can also live higher up in the tide line. So there's uh, quite a few uh, advantages to these guys that very closely resemble our native little neck clam. It should be noted that there is a size limit on these guys and they need to be at least an inch and a half across. A lot of crab measurers these days actually have the hole that you can put them through to see if they're that large. You could also measure them, I guess, with like a, a you know string tape measure. Um, the inch and a half thing is just to make sure they do get a breeding cycle in. Watch out for fakes. Sometimes you'll dig up a clam and it'll actually be just full of mud because it's been, uh, you know, eaten or died of natural causes. Uh, then, you know, it gets buried in the sediment and full of mud. So be sure to kind of check your clams just with your hands. And if the shell shifts a bit, that means that clam is probably dead. Uh, discard it and get a clam you can eat. Here's another import from Japan that's hardier than our native species, the Olympia oyster. Again, these are really nice sized steamer clams, uh, manila clams. Yeah, here's one of the bad ones I was warning you about. As you can see, it's just full of uh, gunk there. All right, so here's my 40 clam uh, limit. I uh, got my little Easter bucket pretty filled up here. Uh, these guys, uh, I'm gonna put them in the back of my trunk. Uh, gets a bag of ice on them. Don't want fresh water to hit them just yet, but uh, keep them nice and cool until they get to the fridge. And uh, I'll probably uh, not eat them tonight, but eat them tomorrow. They will survive in the fridge for a couple of days, as long as you keep them nice and cool. Again, I like to put a pack of ice on top of them in a bowl. Uh, yeah, then uh, cook them up. Well, thanks a ton for tuning in. I hope to see you on next month's Washington Fish Quest. I think I'll take a month off from digging in the mud. Nah, eh, it's pretty fun. Who knows?